I'm going to try to get as much video footage as I can today. I got some dryers to fix at this particular laundromat. I've got washers to fix at another one. And we've got a lot of customers around, so this should be real interesting. Let's open this one up. Roller bearing time. He's had a customer walk out. He uses the laundromat, but he's also different. Let's put it that way. Never a dull moment here, folks. 9 16 that's what the nut is on the back of these things. The drum has two roller bearings. If they don't come loose, <laughs> I think this one just did. They're usually pretty easy to fix. Yeah, it came loose, so basically the nut's just spinning now. It's kind of a crappy design. It's a good idea and a bad idea all at the same time. The old ones, you have to take the whole cover off. The newer ones, you can do it from the inside if they don't come loose like that one just did. This one might have come loose, too. This is what I don't like about some of these machines. They have these great ideas for designs, and then they just don't work. Come on. Yeah, I think we're pretty much screwed. I move the camera. I got customers coming in. This is the roller stud right here. And you can see I'm flipping it around. That's that nut on the one side I was trying to take off, but it would not come free. So here what I have to do, which is a real pain in the butt, is that stud is like square on the back side. It's got threads on both ends. One side where your roller attaches to it, you have like a 9 16 nut there on that end where I'm hooking the socket. Now this is the part of the stud that's square, and so I'm trying to use some wrenches. It's, it's not three-quarter, it's not five-eighths, so I end up using a, a crescent wrench. And I even tried to use a socket, that didn't work, but I ended up using a crescent wrench to hold it. And that other stud, the bolt is a three-quarter that mounts in, and a little later in the video you see me actually using a three-quarter wrench to tighten it up as best I can. I probably should have put some Loctite on it, but there's the stud. What a pain in the butt. It's nice that you can take it off without taking the front panel off. But the problem is, is if you let these roller bearings run for any amount of time that are weak or they're falling off, they this nut you'll see, this three-quarter nut that backs in the back of this stud through this metal plate here, it'll back itself off. And then next thing you know, you're not loosening it the easy way. And uh, they need to put some kind of, I, I don't know why there's a lock nut on there or a lock jam or something. And that's that nut, that three-quarter nut right there. I'm putting the stud back on. There's two flat washers. I don't know why. I, I would have done it just a little different. At least put a slot from the bottom that you could get a wrench. There I am trying to fit a three-quarter wrench in there. And it's just not going so hot. But what a pain. It likes that. At least you don't have to take front cover off. But the minute you notice these are bad, you need to get to them. And this is why, right here. And this, this, I barely have the cover off. I didn't take the two screws out of the front cover at the top. I just took out the bottom and around the lint tray. Now there's a top view of it. That's that three quarter nut that the panel goes up against. That's what I'm trying to tighten. Now here's another thing I want to show you. These dryers are 2018. See the lint that's in these coin mechanisms here? I sped it up because it's boring. But you need to clean these with the compressed air and some kind of electronics cleaner and a couple stiff brushes like what I'm doing. Do not use any oil products or lint will stick to them. If you have a lot of lint in these things, like I haven't opened these since 2018. That's all the lint I had in them. If you open them up and they're packed full of lint, you have a lint loop and a problem there. So while I'm at it, I'm cleaning all this up, detailing it, trying to make it look good. Oh, yeah, I love this.
always change both because if one's bad the other one's going to go bad and next thing you know you're right back at it if the other one's still in good shape it came apart too yeah they're easy to fix Keener. no they're not quick this laundromat I'm just sitting here filming and I swear it never fails I mean it's got I think we're eight cars deep right now there are people just flooding in this place if your laundromat's in a good location I mean on a busy street you're gonna have a lot of people I mean you can see all the cars I know it's a horrible ca I know that's a horrible camera angle but I'm trying not to spook my customers I need to figure out how to set these cameras up when I'm working in there so they don't it doesn't bother them but I gotta go get another part and then the other dryer will be fixed and then got to work on some washers <laughs> so i'm not done yet all right i'm here i'm here at laundromat number two and i want to show you something i get a lot of questions about dryers i know it's background's horrible what to look for in dryers here's something this is the back of your dryer door this is your dryer door this is the front and you see those two holes there you see that one's got a bolt in it and a screw and actually it's got a nut on the back. There should be six of them. There's two there. There's one missing right there. There's another one. There's two missing here. Now how I noticed this was this thing was, and I'm one-handed, this metal part here where it attaches to this was floppy. I mean it was just flopping back and forth. You want to check this. You want to check this on your dryers. You, that's why you want to like open and close the doors. You want to check the seals. This has another seal around. I took it off. You want to make sure the lock isn't breaking or breaking the tab that it goes on. Those are things you want to check. You also want to turn that drum because those rollers I'm replacing, you can actually hear when they're going bad. And that's a real preventative thing. Like in my old videos, like way back, you would see me go through my laundromat and I would be turning drums all the time and I'd check all of them. And a lot of people thought I was checking for clothes or something in them. While I am checking for something in it, I'm looking for screws. I'm listening for screws in those holes. I'm also listening to see if it's scraping that door, you know, the frame of the door where the door actually, not the door, but the door frame where the door actually locks. Once those rollers go bad, that drum was actually going to eat into that lip. And if you let it go too long, it'll destroy it. It'll make it sort of catch its clothes all the time. And then you'll have to buy a new, a new cover. So it's really paramount keep an eye on that if you hear them grinding noise and I should have played the one I had at the other laundromat that I was working on because it made a hell of a noise and it seems like to me I don't know about other laundromat owners leave a comment below but it seems like I go from a good roller to a bad one overnight like there's no there's no hey I think that's going I can hear it tweaking it's like it just destroys itself instantaneously at some point when someone's using it and then you catch it the next day I just really believe that because I just never find them where the rollers are slowly wearing out. I think it's partly because of the heat, but it's partly because of what they put in the dryers, overloading the dryers, putting shoes in the dryers. It really beats on those rollers. They call them roller bearings, drum roller support bearings, whatever you want to call them. They look like, I, I, think, I think they look like skate, skateboard wheels. That's what I think, but they're thinner. Anyway. That's what you're checking for. You're checking for screws, you're checking for those rollers, you're checking for your doors not falling off its hinges. If you feel that, you need to stop and fix it because it's gonna go from that to bad. Like I just noticed this, and this dryer's been out of order for a couple days. So it's not very far away from this glass falling off, breaking, it's gonna cost you more money, and, then, and you could've just tightened a couple screws, you know? So it's part of the pain as a laundromat, is constantly being like a dryer whisper, a washer whisper, a change machine whisper, your laundry cart whisper, your folding tables, chairs, everything. You gotta know what it sounds like. It's like operating combines. It's like operating farm equipment, construction equipment. When we operate that equipment, we know what it should sound like. When we walk into a machine and run it for a little bit, we can tell something's wrong. I mean, it's just like your car. You can tell something's wrong. That's the way you gotta get with your laundromats. Real good tip. 
you really got to pay attention because that'll avoid very costly repairs later and problems with customers. I know it's, it's a pain because you want to be real passive and you don't want to be there because everybody tells everybody you're just collecting quarters, but you need to be listening to your laundromat. So I'm going to put this door on. There's a customer in here. So I'm going to start just wearing my GoPro, I think, because I have never seen my laundromats this busy on a Tuesday. This is a Tuesday, and that's crazy for me. I'm going to put this door on. I know the third laundromat I'm going to, there won't be any customers at tonight. So I'll be able to film some more dryer repair for you. So let me get this door put on and we'll head over to the next one.